This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. Yeah, surf the beat cause the bass is bubbling Gotta get it in before it comes tumbling down There's only so much time to find this kind of rhyme to express my mind Sweet! Welcome to the Cage Cast I'm your host, Charlie, the Professor Esser And with me as always is my skinny rich friend It's Maz Hey Maz, welcome the season two, episode twelve of the Cage Cast. We're almost there. Almost the penultimate episode, as they say. Mm. Uh, can't front on me. Luke teams up with an unlikely ally to combat a new strain of heroin. As Shades plows ahead with his plan, a massive party draws everyone to the club. Our director this week is Everardo Gout. Uh, of course, we get our uh, normal writers list, including all the guys at Marvel who made it all start. Archie Goodwin and the gang. And then let's get down to Chio Hadari Coker, who gets our created by credit. Uh, Ada Mashaka Kroll gets our written by credit. Our executive story editor is Matt Owens. And the hardest working man in show business this week, our staff writer, Matthew Lopez. Oh, I want, okay. to know who gets, I want to know who gets the writing credit for Mashaka's name. Mashaka's oh, yeah, Mashaka <laughs> Crow. Yeah. Well, I guess, I guess I guess his mommy, or maybe his daddy, or who knows? Or her have, daddy. I'm sorry. Or her daddy. I, th- well, I thought that sounded like a lady's name. Yeah, I, Ada. Yeah, that is a lady. So, so someone. Or you know what? Maybe maybe it is a name that uh, Ada Mashaka Crow took herself in later life and mm. wanted a name that would just make you think. You know, hey, a lot of writers do right under nom de plume. So. Right, right. Well, that definitely is a name that makes you stop and go, hey, let's talk about this for a second. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a drop. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so this is a uh, this is our episode. Um, we get our nice little parallel back to the start of the series, right? Uh, with of course, no longer is our drug of choice called Power Man. Was it called Power Man or was it called Luke Cage? I think, I it, think was, it was just called Luke Cage. Called Luke Cage. Okay, Luke Cage ran because because you know you know uh, drug addicts they really want that branded merchandise, you know. Right. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so uh, Luke Cage. So we no longer have the Luke Cage brand uh, heroin. We have now have the the um, the power ma- or the Bushmaster. Bushmaster brand. cocaine. It looked like. Uh, well, I think it was because it's like that blue crystal. I think it's supposed to be meth stuff. Uh-oh. And all I know, all I can really say is, it sure as heck weren't weed. Right. Because, of course, you know, our, 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 our good friend from the barbershop says, oh, my friends don't do that kind of stuff. Well, no, clearly your friends do that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, clearly your friends do that kind of stuff because they were doing that kind of stuff in this scene. Yeah. So, I mean, I saw it myself with my own two eyes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they are definitely uh, definitely doing the, the bath salty stuff, which, you know, again, goes to this idea like, who sells drugs to make you crazy? I mean, like you want repeat business in that in that industry, I think, you know. And at the same time, there are people that just they do buy it. Well, I they buy it and then they buy it again. People are uh, inexplicable. Well, you know, I think that people buy the stuff that makes them crazy when they want to be when, when they're basically at that crazy level of of, of, of drug addiction. But this is like, oh, I don't think anyone like just buys their first drug. Say, oh, is that 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 Bushmaster stuff that drives you insane? Let's get some of that. And more to the point, it's like, who sells that? It's like, I, I don't know. I I really think that you know maybe people. I think maybe it was a plot device, really. Um, 
Or Mariah probably did it on purpose to have a bad drug out there attached to his name. I mean, that's possible. But again, is that good for business? Would the Chinese go along with that? that that's all I'm saying. That's but, a great point, too. But again, this actually gets to one of these things that I think is like this weird trope of, of fiction. It's not just comic books. Um, you know, this idea of the aversion to selling drugs. Mm. You know, mm. it's like this, you know, all, every <clears throat> every mafia guy you ever see in a movie is like, no, we don't sell the drugs. The drugs are bad. We don't sell the drugs. And yet somehow someone is selling all these drugs. Right. <laughs> you know? It's like, I don't, call me crazy, I don't think Mariah would, you know, I don't think this is the first time drugs have been introduced to Harlem. I'm just right, going to live right. on that yeah, one. Yeah, did that in the 80s. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach out on that. I'm going to say, I think that uh, Mariah maybe did not, this is not the first time drugs were introduced to Harlem. But, right. um, anyway, but we we have this thing where we have to track down who is selling this? And this time it goes really fast um, because, of course, Shug's on their team. Uh, right. And, you know, you want to know something, you ask a driver. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, he basically tells them, you know, that um, the, uh, the um, you know, that the Chinese have these things. And uh, Luke goes to bust it up. And of course, who should he meet there but uh, Bushmaster, who right. has come to bust it up as well. And I don't know. I, I, I kind of find like, I kind of feel like the team up is really forced here. Yeah, I mean, perhaps. I was too busy just being excited. Maybe it's because, you know, I grew up watching wrestling and this was yes. like the classic story of like the best tag team ever forming out of like the two arguably best guys ever, you know, oh, it's kind of cool. Well, I, I mean, appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, I can feel and, that. And for a second there, I thought somebody was going to get put through a table. I, I was so hoping that they would do like a, a tag team move where one guy picks the guy up and the other guy like choke slams him or something. I don't know. Yeah. I, that made me happy. I mean, I can I can get that, and, and certainly it was a really fun fight to watch. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue yeah. the funness of the fight. I'm yeah. gonna argue, and this is something that happens throughout this, which is this weird thing where it's like everyone seems to have forgot the heads on pikes earlier this 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 year, <laughs> season. You know, yeah. everyone's got kind of forgotten about the atrocities, and you know, granted, yes, Mariah's atrocity <laughs> definitely a worse atrocity. But let's not forget that, you know, unbidden, I love you too, Benny, um, unbidden, you know, uh, freaking Bushmaster was committing atrocities left and white before this. I mean, you know, you know, you know, and they're not just the, not just gangsters. You know, that's the other thing you got to remember. It's not just gangsters. He kills, he really only killed one gangster. Everybody else I think he killed, they're all just dudes, you know, um, you know, he, you know, the, the, the guy who ran Atreus practice, plastics, murders him, straight up cold blood. Uh, yeah. The guy who just handles money, kills him, straight up cold blood. And it's like, this is not a nice person. Yeah. And this urge to try and make him a nice person at the end, I think, kind of undercuts it, you know? The idea that Mariah is evil is great, but it's not like we didn't already know Mariah was evil. Right. You know, and not for nothing, her greatest evils are all things that happen when other people are pushing her and have her backed up against the wall. You know, prior to this, you know, before Mariah does, I mean, not anything, but before she really goes nuts, you know, this guy is tying her and his and her, her daughter up in a house to set them both on fire. That's know? true. And, you know, it's like, I, I, I kind of feel this redemption arc for, I mean, and here's what I'll say. You see Tilda's take on it, knowing the character from the comics and knowing what her arc is, it kind of makes sense. But, like, everyone else, like, Luke Cage should not be, you know, like, Luke Cage saying to him, you know, you kill anyone, then this team up is off, you know? Yeah. It's, it's like, yeah, he already killed a lot of people, you know, Luke. It's, 
Like, it's like, you're asking him not to kill any more for these next five minutes. And of course, you know, and then of course, what does he do? He tries to kill everybody. <laughs> right. He's going to burn the place down, you know, with his little incendiary bomb, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and he did actually axe a guy, though. Didn't he get a guy in the back with the axe? Hmm. I mean, that guy's got to be dead. Uh, well, I, you can. This is the comic book. You can take an axe in the back, you know. That's true. That's true. That's true. You know, and and actually, you know, you if you miss the vital organs, you know, there's there's you know you that's can a actually fair point as well. You know, it's uh, it got stuck in the rib cage. That's why you got a rib cage. That's the <laughs> whole reason you have a rib cage to defend against <laughs> axe attacks. Um. <laughs> Oh man. Yes, but uh so that that's that. Um we see that Mariah has sort of built up her new little cabal. She's going to be the godmother of Harlem and she wants to unite all the feuding families to let them into the lucrative uh lu- lucrative uh market of Harlem because you know it's the first time they're ever allowing drugs into Harlem. It's a very big deal. Uh, or the first time they're allowing someone other than themselves to bring it in, I think. Yeah, right? I mean, that, that, well, that's, yeah, that's certainly another argument, yes. That, uh, and what I thought was interesting, I mean, like, it was a kind of on the nose, like, if you wanted to make, you know, the imperceptible, almost slight subtext of the thing being that she's selling black people's soul. Oh, yes. Make the thing that she's selling called the soul of black people. Yeah, yeah, the uh, soul of black like, people. It would have been a cool thing if it was just like, oh, that represents that, and if you know, but probably maybe I would have missed it, but still, just being yeah. that on the nose kind of took away from it a little well, bit. Well, you know, I think what's important in that too is that she, as she's selling the souls of black folks, you know, mm. to let the drugs into Harlem, she's also saying, but remember, it's mine and I want it back, that I get to hang on to it because basically what it's really about is that she already owns the souls of black folks. And mm. that's sort of the, or at least that's how she sees it. Right, she right. owns the souls of black folks and she will rent them out to the outsiders, but it's still her souls of black folk. So that, that I think is the implication there. Mm. Um, and, you know, I, I mean, I think it's a solid implication. Um, I think it's all, <laughs> I think it's all very, uh, uh, you know, understandable for the character that this is how she approaches it. Yeah. And we get in this, what I think is also, which I think is a, a follow-up from last week's episode, which is that um, Shades has decided to turn, turn stool pigeon. Well, I mean, that, that sounds like a, a really ugly word to describe a, a really difficult thing that he chose to do, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I'm not denying it, but, you know, he's the first one to say, you know, he's a snitch, you know? He's yeah, I know, snitch. I know. But that's just because he's feeling down on himself. I think yeah. what, what he's doing is, is it's like there were three people that really, really loved Harlem. They weren't just two. Shades was one of them. And he had a vision for Harlem as well. And yeah. he's been sort of like shepherding or trying to shepherd that vision into fruition for a long time through many different people. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I think he deserves yeah. that. Well, but what I guess what... And what he say, does is in defense of Harlem every time, you know? Mm-hmm. And and I think there is, there is a fair cop to that. But I also think that, you know, I, I think that there's a quality to it where... You know, and here's what I'll say. He's turning on Mariah, but I don't know if he's really turning on Mariah. And I'll get to, because here, here's the thing. So he, first off, he gets his proffer. Right. And he doesn't just give them evidence on Mariah. He doesn't yeah. just say the last three weeks. He decides to go all the way back to season one. Hmm. And basically admit to every dirty crime he's ever done. And the logic of this, of course, is, is that he can't be held accountable if they correct, if they convict Mariah, right. But then he does something really interesting when we get to the actual final battle. Hmm. He takes the gun that he's there to get from Mariah. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, 
no one ever sees Mariah have the gun. No one. But, yeah. But but the fact that it was in her house, and he could corroborate that it was her gun is yeah. enough. I thought. And 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 well, except that Mariah can just as you say, no, Hernan brought that gun. That's Hernan's gun. Cornell gave him that gun. I do know that gun. That's the gun Cornell used to shoot uh, shoot Pete. So what you're saying is that he was sneakily trying to not allow the gun to be connected to her? Maybe. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it was just instinct that he says, give me the gun when Bushmaster's trying to bust in. Uh, in that moment, I think he wants... Here's how I saw it. I thought, like, you know, he's he doesn't want to be doing this. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to be doing this, but also uh, everybody else and, you know, at least the smallest shred of decency comes first, and he mm -hmm. has to protect people, and he has to protect Harlem. So he doesn't want to be doing this, but when push comes to shove, he doesn't want her to die either. And if the decision has to be made in that moment with nothing else, uh, you know, allowed to weigh in on that decision, he's going to protect her because he does care for her. Yeah, and and that is, I mean, that's a that's a that's a fair interpretation. I, that's how I saw it. I guess I guess I don't even know if it was intentional. I just know that from mm. a from a legalistic point of view, mm. the fact that they don't find mm. the gun, that her oh, they non, do find the gun. I'm sorry. They do find the gun. No, her non hands Misty the gun at the end. Right. Oh. So it was always on her non's person, and that's the thing. If her, if she can say that's her nan's gun, who's gonna who 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 establishes that it's not her nan's gun? The only person who can establish that it's not her nan's gun is her nan. But uh, it could be like a a known family heirloom. You know, it's been like Cornell killed Pete with that gun. Yes, and and you know he was and Shades was friends with Cornell. Yeah, but I don't think back then. I think this was like done when like Cornell must have been like seventeen or something, or maybe they no, were. No, 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 no. Well, yeah, no, Cornell, because they did a flashback in season one where they show Cornell shooting Pete, uh. and you know, and Mariah is standing next to him, you know. Wow. But wow. but you know, uh, Mom's is making him kill Pete, and this mm. was this was sort of her. This is when Cornell becomes becomes the mobster because he didn't want to be. He wanted to be a musician. Right. He was the one really trying to fight it. But then, you know, Mom, Ma, Mama Stokes says, no, you have to, you're the man of the house, you have to be the gangster. Yeah. And that I think has always been the tension between uh, Mariah and uh, Mariah and Cornell. And of course, that is if nothing else, what I think is the central idea here that, you know, um, they, both of them, never really wanted to be gangsters. Right. But both of them were pulled into it so deeply and forced into it by these choices other people made for them that they never really had the chance to to be something else, um, you know, and that I think is maybe what is we're supposed to feel for for Tilda is that she was the one person given a chance to be to make her own choice. Right, right. Um, but we'll see what choice Tilda makes. Bum mm -hmm. bum bum. We do know one choice she makes, which is to help um, to help Bushmaster. Break yeah. in to kill her mom. Like, would those two just get it on already? Uh, yeah, you know what? But well, I mean, it's an intense scene. But here's the thing, because like, what what Tilda is doing is just straight up out cold. I mean, it is just without a doubt the most dark thing she can do. She is killing. She is sending this man to kill her mom, and. Not for nothing, she is sending Bushmaster to die. Um, well, hmm. no, she's sending Bushmaster, and here's how you know. Because she hands him the supercharged nightshade serum. 
right? Right. right. And she says to him, she says to him, this can double you st- your strength, but it will it could it will destroy your body and your mind. Then she says, don't take it all at once. <laughs> and what does he do? <laughs> of course. Yeah, he's working. Yeah, he takes it all at once because he is an addict. And she knows he is an addict. And she knows darn well he is going to take it all at once. And she is giving him this thing so that the two of them can essentially, so that he will kill her mother and then he will die. Right. No, that is the truth of it. Yeah, she she's uh, she's definitely a Stokes. Yeah, double Stokes twice over, as she said. She's double mm. Stokes. And, and what I can say is, and for for Bushmaster to trust her just shows you how far he's gone. You know, right? You know, right. It's like he's just like I got. I just got to. I got to fulfill my task, and I'm even going to trust someone who. Earlier, I was trying to kill, and whom is a Stokes, and I say every Stokes must burn, you know? Right, right, right. You know, it's like he's just totally like, yeah, fine, whatever. <laughs> but uh, that does get us to our second big battle royale with, uh, you know, a Berserker Bushmaster. And. Um, that was fun, too. Yeah, I mean, it was a good one. Although I gotta say, and this is just a thing for me, I know he is like quote unquote bulletproof. Right. But would it kill him to wear a bulletproof vest too? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like I know you're like you're sort of bulletproof, but first off, you're not all the way bulletproof. Yeah, and it I, takes you like weeks to recover. Exactly. It's like it would really be a smart idea to just wear I mean Wear a, just wear a flak jacket, you know? Wear something yeah. other than just a shirt. And um, although I will say I love when he dodges the bullet. Yes, that, that was so that, awesome. That was an awesome scene. Because um, I yeah. thought they were going to do, like, the bullet shattering off his eye or something. And I was no. like, come on. And then he moved. I was like, oh, his yeah. senses got sharper, too. Yeah, well, of course that's the uh, he's like all super soldiered up right now. Yeah. Um, but they're not, you know, they're not gonna they're not gonna do a uh, Superman Returns there. Because <laughs> no one likes that scene. No one likes that scene. Because <laughs> no. everybody in the theater is like, ah, oh, right in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't care if you're invulnerable. That's still something in your eye. It's like ah yeah. ah, I got a bullet in my eye. Yeah. <laughs> that's annoying. Yeah. Anyway, um, but of course, and of course, for for in in her defense, she does. We 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 assume. I don't think we ever actually see it. We assume that she drives a uh, Bushmaster to safety. Um, right. although again, maybe maybe she doesn't. Maybe she left, and Bushmaster just hopped up on his rage juice, just ran home. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, he must have known the safest place to go or the likeliest place he can get more nightshade or any sort of help for his condition would be uh, Tilda's shop, you know? Yeah. Well, and but, but, but you know, after he leaves the club, you know, he disappears. And she yeah. le- he leaves Tilda with the keys, but, you know, we never yeah. actually see him pick her up. So that's all yeah. I'm saying. I, yeah. I'm saying you end this episode and... You, of course, assume that she helped him get away. But really, should you assume that? You know, she did just give him the whole vial of nightshade and say, oh, by the way, don't take it all at once. Mm-hmm. You know, don't blow your whole load. So, yeah. Uh, but Mariah does get arrested. And, you know, like I say, she's walking out proud at the end of that. I think she's mm-hmm. justified to. Mm-hmm. I don't think their case is as strong as they think. They got, they got shades to flip, but again, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a guy who is not a reliable witness, you know? Yeah. You know, and of course the fact, and here's the thing, the fact that he admitted to everything doesn't help his case because one can say, well, he admitted to all those crimes because he got his immunity for it. Because everything he said, he got immunity for, so that no one could ever come back and say, ah, but remember you actually 
killed Candace and you did this and you shut up Pops Barbershop. Um, you know, he... That, that's why he does all this stuff. But, um, you know, I don't think that... Uh, I don't think that makes him a rel any more reliable because someone can just as easily said, well, he said all that stuff because he knew he would be protected. So, of course, he made it to all of his crimes. But now right. we have to believe that this guy who is an admitted criminal right. uh, is actually telling the truth about poor poor Mariah Stokes Dillard, you know. No, but I mean, I'm sure their plan is, is a bit deeper than that. They've got, you know, stuff that hinged. Well, I guess if it does only hinge on his testimony, what is that worth really, I guess? You're right. Exactly. I mean, that's my point. It's, it is a lot of stuff. It's a lot of circumstantial evidence, you know. Hmm. I mean, the biggest thing they actually have her on is the stock manipulation. And, you know, mm. and, you know, uh, not for nothing. Uh, uh, oh, what's her name? The Martha Stewart did a nickel for that. And, you know, she mm -hmm. came out just fine. You yeah. know, that's the thing. It's like that, that kind of crime. Yeah, she'll do it. She'll do a nickel for it and she'll call it a day. You know? Yeah, I, th I think her uh, her popularity soared much higher after that. Well, yeah, well, because she knew Snoop, Snoop Dogg. She got yeah. friends with Snoop Dogg after that. <laughs> you know, she got to be all... She was no lo She was no longer, you know, the epitome of white privilege. She was just just another just another gal from Rikers, you know? So, right. Yeah, uh, street cred. She got her street cred, man. Yeah. She shanked a person. So yeah. there you go. I don't know if Martha Stewart ever shanked someone. But I'll guarantee you that was a lovely handmade shank that she did at Rikers. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so Mariah's got arrested, and uh, that is how we end this episode. And Luke, almost, Luke almost kills uh, Bushmaster, but Misty has to stop him, which I thought was a bit of a stretch. Well, you know, I don't know if he almost killed Bush. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, he's definitely choking the guy out. Yeah. I, I don't see him go anywhere past choking the guy out. Yeah, and, and, and even if, like, he was unconscious, he was safe and he was perfectly fine. They should have let him at least knock him out, you know, mm -hmm. but I guess, I don't know. Yeah, well, well, they had to let him, they had to ha ha help him, they had to have him escape, of course, out of this. Oh, fair enough, you're right. You know, so, yeah. and, you know, and that's the thing, like, he wasn't going to kill him choking him out, I don't think, I mean, you, you can kill a man choking him out, obviously. But it's actually very difficult. And, you know, if he had stopped after he passed out, then it would have been fine. But then again, he's hopped up on the on the uh, nightshade, so maybe he's not going to pass out real quick, you know. He's mm. you know, struggling, he'll never That's get that point. moment. And then he lets him go, and then all of a sudden he's like right back up, you know. <clears throat> yeah. He's on the nightshade. Forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, so... So that was the penultimate episode of Luke Cage. Um, yeah, really I did enjoy is this like... episode, although I have to say I love the final episode. Oh, my God. I thought it was the, one of the best episodes they've ever done. There were several, several moments in that next episode where I was like, wow, just that one or two lines is maybe the best bit of writing I've seen on the show ever. And there was yeah. like two or three moments with moments like that. Oh, yeah. And there's, I mean, yeah, it's, just, it's just a great episode. And we will talk about all of that next week. So join us here, dear listeners. Once again, step into the cage for the cage cast. Uh, Moz, how can people find you if they need to? Oh, they can email me at mozmanzor at gmail.com or find me on Facebook under Moz Manzor. That's M O Z M A N Z O R. And of course, you can always write to me in that old fashioned email way the way our Moz and Paz once did at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's super. Connectivity blog, all one word, at gmail.com. And of course, follow me on the Twitter as I live tweet Agents of Shield and um, Gotham and Cloak and Dagger and all these shows coming back at Charlie Esser. That's C H A R L I E E S S C R. Look for the two E's in the middle for quality. Ding. All right, sweet sister, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us here in the Cage Cast. Next week, for one final time, please step into the cage with us once again. Good night. <laughs>